Hi, I'm Pablo Spechalski and have you noticed that in the last around two years a lot in the RC hobby and especially in the FPV drones hobby is about the latency. A lot of people are doing everything they can to have as low latency as possible. Because for example, first the TBS showed the 150 Hz RC link update mode because everybody knows that 150 Hz is better than for example 50 Hz. Then we started to use and implement and think about even faster protocols uh, that allows to shave the milliseconds on the transition phase between, for example, receiver and the flight controller. We increase the loop time, we increase, well, we do everything we can to lower the latency whenever we can. And thanks to thinking like that, for example, the upcoming Immersion RC Ghost uh, radio system um, will, for example, have the Super Race or something like that mode when they will be pushing updates uh, with the rate of 222 Hertz. And now the question is, but does it really make sense? Is it really that important to have the RC link with the update rate of 100 or 200 Hertz? Can you feel the difference? This is something else that I will talk in the upcoming months. To today I will show you only that, well, <laughs> there is this thing called the physics and inertia and yeah, it's a bitch. This is a quadcopter. This is the 5 inch quadcopter drone that has the motor and the propeller. And we use faster and faster ESC protocols, lately not that really much faster, but, but still, protocols to inform the ESCs as soon as possible that the ESC should change the rotation speed of the motor and change the thrust generated by the propeller itself. And... We like to think that this is happening immediately, that for example, if in this millisecond I will inform the flight controller that it should do this thing right now, this thing is happening immediately. Um, I decided to check. I decided to check how much the propeller and the motor stays behind the signal that goes into the ESC. What's the delay of that part of the system? Because with the control loop we like to think that half a millisecond is too much and uh, 200 kilohertz loop time is too much, but how much the propeller actually stays behind the control signal from the flight controller to ESC? Is it one millisecond, two millisecond, twenty? Maybe it's Maybe the response is really immediate. <sighs> Before I will show you the experiment I designed and experiment I, I will share the result with you, let's begin with two things. A. The, it takes time for the signal to get from the flight controller and the ESC, and this is what the faster ESC protocol handles. However, if you watched my video about is there is a flight difference between D-Shot and One-Shot 125, you might be like, kind of, oh, okay, but, but does it really make sense? And it's a completely different issue for the ESC to actually change the rotation speed of the motor. Why? Because ESCA cannot do it immediately when the signal comes, because there is the thing called the motor timing and ESC have to find the right spot in the rotation phase of the motor when the magnet is in the correct position relative to the coil and then energize the coil even there. Even if the signal comes in the millisecond one, it ESC might have to wait a millisecond or two or it really depends on the on the rotation speed and the motor itself until it can energize the next coils and start actually increasing the vel the angular velocity of the motor and then there is this thing that the rotating propeller is the flywheel and to change the rotation of the flywheel rotation speed of the flywheel you have to feed it the energy you have to constantly feed it the energy. In this case, it's the um, torque 
applied to the to the propeller to start it spinning faster if you don't know what the in and this is the moment of inertia uh, of the of the propeller and to decelerate the propeller you have to start taking the energy out of the propeller itself and the faster the propeller is rotating the more energy it has, the more energy is required to put into the propeller to start spinning it, for example, 10% faster. And you have to take more energy of the spinning propeller to slow it down. And this takes time because motors does not have unlimited amount of torque. The torque on the motor is limited. So, what I did? I did a very simple experiment. I flashed this very quad with regular flight controller with the ESC telemetry and I recorded a normal flight. Normal flight and then I compared what is the delay between the moment when the flight controller starts to inform the ESC that it should change the rotation speed of the motor and the moment when telemetry from the ESC is fed back to the flight controller with the information that yes, right now the, the motor, the propeller is actually changed the rotation speed. And you know what? This is kind of interesting data. And some of you might be really surprised. But let's not go ahead and without further ado, let's take a look at the data. Let's take a look at the data. Like I mentioned in the opening part of the video, I have recorded the flight with the black box and today now looking at the black box log, we will take a look at two values. The value number one, the top graph, is the output of the flight controller. It is the information from the flight controller to the ESC how fast it should be rotating the motor and the bottom graph which shows the recorded, yes, recorded rotation speed of the motor. So we will be able to see how much of the delay there is between the input signal and the output signal. The best places to look for such a events is when uh, the motor is ordered to accelerate from the low rotation to the high rotation because then there is this very distinguishable moment when the acceleration is supposed to happen and also during the deceleration and all the places where the throttle is increased rapidly. Let's begin with the first event when motor number four because we are looking at the only on the input and the output of the motor number four was ordered to change rotation from the idle speed to flight speed. So the event, the timestamp when the order of the rotation speed should apply is somewhere here and the timestamp is one second, 183 milliseconds after R. Now let's observe when is the first moment when motor actually starts to accelerate. So if we move somewhere over here and now we are sure that the acceleration is actually happening, you see it's delayed comparing to this, the timestamp is 214. This thing happened 90 something, so let's say 15 plus 15 around 30 milliseconds later. In this first event we had 30 millisecond delay between the input and the output of the system. So it's quite a long period of time comparing that we are trying to shave for example the only the control link nothing connected with stabilization only the control link from let's say 6 or 9 milliseconds to 4 milliseconds. 2 versus 30, you know. Let's search for different places. Okay, for example here, here the motor number 4 is ordered to start lowering the rotation speed. So the moment timestamp here in the output of the flight controller is 787, but the earliest moment when the motor actually starts lowering the speed is 811 once again around 30 milliseconds later and every time we everywhere I really was looking for the long time at this long every place when we are 
Well, almost, because this, for example, is not recording such an event. In most of the places when we can observe the order of the, the request to change the rotation speed, there is between 10 to 30, even up to 40, it really depends on the situation of the rotation speed, delay between the input and the output. I can, of course, show you much more examples like this. For example, here the deceleration, the input is already decelerating 293 for here. It's decelerating between those two places for around 50 milliseconds, but only here 50 milliseconds motor really starts to lower the rotation speed. Here exactly the same. You see input already picked in this uh, timestamp, but motor is still accelerating because it already fed enough the, uh, of the energy into the propeller. Let's scroll further, let's scroll further here. Exactly the same situation. Uh, this is 691 versus 6722. Once again, around 30 milliseconds. We can take a look at this black box. Okay, last example. Really, guys, the last example. Here, um, this is beautiful place when this is really visible. The timestamp before the acceleration order is 24004. While the motor really starts to notice anything and change the rotation speed at 24032. Once again, around 30 milliseconds. And we are not even talking about the delay between the rotation speed of the propeller and the amount of trust it's generating and the actual beginning of the maneuver when the motors have to overcome the inertia of the frame. Interesting? Yeah, interesting. So, it's not that fast as you might think. So, what's the verdict? The verdict is that I'm not saying that all the latest development in lowering the latency of, for example, the radio control protocols and the as fast as bus or the, this new thing in the immersion RC ghost uh, system called ghost protocol is a bad thing. No, I'm not saying that. However, there is this, this practical aspect of if you have 20, 30 or 40 milliseconds of the physical delay on the response time of the system, if you think that you will notice a difference between the control link latency of 9 versus 6 milliseconds versus 4 milliseconds, um, then yeah, probably you will not really notice. Yes, faster processing of some of the stuff really makes sense because for example by uh, increasing by, by making the Nyquist, fre Nyquist frequency higher you prevent the negative aspects of for example aliasing and you can really filter some frequencies and you really do lower the delay between your stick input and the output but <laughs> Come on, if you really really lower from 6 milliseconds to 4 milliseconds, but still there is this 30 or 40 milliseconds between the motor can uh, really change the rotation speed of the propeller, then, um, well, um, I would not really count that it makes that much of the difference and it's worth the effort put into this and, uh, well, you might start to think that, hmm, new is always better, right? And having a faster protocol is actually a great way to convince people to buy the new hardware use propeller. And to make things funnier, the quad I tested this with is using relatively powerful 2208 motors and relatively light uh, propellers. So with the smaller motor and the heavier propeller, the latency of the motor response would be much, 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 much higher. And this brings even more questions about if there is a much sense between like knowing that I'm using the fastest possible protocol. Um, yeah, I hope you know where I'm going with that. And I do re really expect that a lot of my fun boys in the negative way, uh, negative sound of this word will share their comments in the 
in the in the description in the in the comments in this video immediately after watching or only hearing about the topic so that's all for today thank you everyone for watching and uh, if you are not my patron on the patreon yet then please consider becoming one because look how amazing stuff i'm doing i'm myth busting the rc hobby now um, maybe this is a good idea okay thank you for watching and until the next one bye bye